So today's lecture will continue this consolidation calculation uh, topic. All right. uh, so for consolidation calculation, so this is, as I mentioned last time, this is the core of part one. Uh, so basically we want, we want to estimate how much settlement is caused due to primary consolidation. So that's the focus of this part. In the previous lecture, just a very quick review. So in the previous lecture, I showed you this uh, plot here. On the left-hand side, that's your clay layer in the field. So we're considering a vertical settlement. So that's a 1D consolidation. And on the right-hand side is a phase diagram. So basically we are linking the settlement, the vertical settlement to the change in void ratio. So this delta E, this delta E term, that's the key in settlement calculation. So we need to figure out basically the change in void ratio due to the added loading. And I highlighted this last equation last time. So this one here, SC, that's our goal. So that's the settlement, that's primary consolidation settlement. And on the right-hand side, you have that delta E. So that's the void ratio change due to added loading. So really, really the key is this delta E. Okay, so I mentioned this last time. And that's the purpose of conducting that 1D consolidation test in the lab is to figure out the relationship between void ratio change and the added loading. Okay, so that's this E log sigma prime curve. Okay. And I also showed you one example, very simple example last time where, so this example one, where you have this E log uh, sigma prime curve. Okay. So you have this curve from the lab and then if you know the sigma or the stress change in the field, you can find the corresponding void ratio change from this curve, and then you can substitute into the consolidation calculation equation. Okay, so that's a simple example. So today I'm going to uh, basically talk about a more generic case. So more often you're not given this E log P curve. Instead, you're given modulus. So you're given basically these two slope we call CS and CC. So that's the slope of the recompression curve and the slope of the initial loading or virgin compression curve. And also pre-consolidation pressure, sigma C prime. Okay. So that's basically what's typically given in our consolidation calculation. So that's what we get from the lab. Okay. So we're going to take this information and look at how do we calculate primary consolidation. Okay. And so I divide the calculation uh, scenarios into uh, three cases, basically, depending on the relationship between um, current effective stress and pre-consolidation pressure. Okay. So I'm going to go over these three cases. And again, all three cases, what we're trying to do is to figure out the void ratio change for a given stress change. Okay. So all three cases, that's what we're doing. And the first case here, so this is sigma naught, so this is the current or present effective stress in the soil. And sigma C prime, of course, pre-consolidation pressure. Okay. So that's sigma C prime. So this is the first scenario where your current or present effective stress in the soil layer is the same as the pre-consolidation pressure. And that by definition is normally consolidated clay. So that's case number one. And if that's the case, when you load the soil layer, we are, no, we are loading a normally consolidated soil layer, the soil is going to follow the initial loading portion, that steeper slope. Okay, so on this slide, I have this, uh, this idealized straight line basin. So we have this, uh, this is your initial, that's your current effective stress, that's before you add any loading on top. Okay, so before. So that's basically the initial effective stress before anything changes. And then you're increasing the effective stress, say putting sandy fuel on top or put some structure on top. So you're loading the soil. And that effective stress in the soil layer is going to increase. So we call that final value sigma F prime. So that's the final effective stress in the soil after loading change. Uh, so this is fine. So after loading, uh, so after soil is loaded. And then we call this uh, change in factor stress delta sigma. 
over delta sigma prime. It's the same. So that's the change in effective stress. You can say how much load you put on top. In the previous example, this delta sigma is basically that surcharge you put at the surface. Okay, so that's delta sigma prime. And the slope of this, this is a virgin compression curve. So it's C sub C. So that's a compression index. Okay. And then the corresponding void ratio. So we have E naught. So that's your initial void ratio corresponding to the current effective stress. So this is. And EF is the final if void ratio. So these are the basically the, the uh, definition of these symbols. And the change in void ratio, we call delta E here. So with all these definitions, then the void ratio change delta E. So you know the stress change is basically sigma prime. So your uh, void ratio delta E can be calculated as the slope C sub C log of sigma F prime over sigma naught prime. So that's a void ratio change. It's a basically just simple, this is a linear uh, straight line. So you just use a slope CC and then the two values, uh, sigma naught and sigma F, you can calculate this void ratio change. And in terms of how you calculate this uh, void ratio change, how you get this expression. So basically we are making use of this slope C sub C. So C sub C basically is the slope of this straight line, which is E naught minus EF over log of sigma F prime minus log of sigma naught prime. Okay. And notice that in the numerator, we're defining the void ratio change as E naught minus EF. Okay. And this is because we want to make the slope, the C sub C compression index a positive number. So that's why we have E naught minus EF in the numerator, but log sigma F prime minus log sigma naught prime in the denominator. Okay. And then for consolidation, primary consolidation as C, it's basically the same expression H over one plus E naught times delta E and substitute that delta E expression into this SC calculation. So we have H over one plus E naught times C sub C log sigma F prime over sigma naught prime. Okay. So this expression is basically the equation for primary consolidation calculation for normally consolidated clay. So one thing I want to point out in this expression is capital H. So this capital H here, this is the thickness of the entire consolidating layer. So this is basically the thickness of the entire clay layer. And this H may be different, different from the depths from which you took the soil sample. So remember for representative sample, we typically take the sample at the middle of the consolidating layer and we conduct one deconsolidation test on that sample. So that depth may be different from the thickness. So this H again is the thickness of the entire consolidating layer. Okay. So this is case number one. This is primary consolidation calculation for normally consolidated clay. And then we have other two cases, two and three, they're pretty similar to uh, in terms of how we calculate SC. So the key is to find this delta E, the void ratio change due to effective stress change. And the difference is basically where clay is. Is it a normally consolidated clay or it's a over consolidated clay? And that will basically affect which slope we use in the calculation. So case number two here, this is a case where you're initial effective stress is smaller than the pre-consolidation ratio and smaller than the final effective stress. Okay. And in this case, if you're looking at this uh, curve here, so we have initial effective stress and it's smaller than the pre-consolidation ratio. So this is sigma C prime. Okay. 
This means the soil is over consolidated. Okay. So you're loading the soil and then your final uh, effect stress is larger than your pre-consolidation uh, pressure. Okay. So this means you're loading an initially over consolidated clay and then pass that pre-consolidation pressure. So the clay becomes, uh, so it's going to follow this uh, uh, loading portion after that. Okay. So you have basically two portions. In the first, this flat portion, this is CS. So that's the recompression index. And for the steeper slope, we know that is CC. Okay. So therefore your total uh, void ratio. So first your total stress change is sigma prime. Okay. So your sigma F okay. is the initial plus, plus uh, the void change. Uh, excuse me, the, the stress change. Okay. And then the corresponding void ratio, again, key is to find that delta E. So this total delta E has two components. The first component is we call delta E R. Okay. So this po first portion corresponding to that, uh, this flat curve, so this recompression curve. Okay. And the second portion we call delta E C that corresponds to the virgin compression, that initial loading. And again, both are straight lines. So you can use just the slope to calculate this delta E. So I'm going to write the final results. Same expression. The only difference is how we calculate void ratio change. Again, we have these two components. So that's why you see in, in this equation, we have two terms for delta E. So the first term corresponds to delta E R. So that's basically when soil is following this recompression curve. So you load from sigma naught to sigma C prime. So that is slope is C S and log of sigma C prime over sigma naught prime. So that is the first portion. So this is the first term, this is delta ER basically, okay. It's this slope here, okay. And then since you're loading past the pre-consolidation pressure, so you have the second term and the slope of that is C sub C. Okay. And this is log sigma F prime over sigma C prime. And the second term corresponds to delta EC on, our, on this plot. So this delta EC. So that's how you calculate the consolidation sediment for case two here. Again, key is finding this delta E. So for case number three, that's another case. In case number three, you start from sigma naught, so that's again your initial effective stress before you add load on top, so it's not, uh, sigma naught. In your final effective stress, sigma F prime is smaller than the pre-consolidation ratio. So this is sigma C prime. Okay. So this is case number three. So you're loading a pre uh, over consolidated clay and your final effective stress is still smaller than the pre-consolidation pressure. And for this case, basically, your soil stays on this recompression curve, okay? So it never gets to the virgin compression portion, okay? And then this is, the slope of this curve is C sub S, the recompression index, okay? So delta E and delta sigma prime. So case three, in this case, we only need to use one slope, that's CS. So your primary consolidation settlement, SC, is H over one plus E naught delta E. 
same equation. And then this delta E is calculated using this recompression index CS. So that's the slope of that, uh, this recompression portion. So H over one plus E, or one plus E naught, then the slope is CS log sigma F prime over sigma naught prime. So this is the expression for case number three. The way you determine which case it is, is to look at the relationship between these three stresses. Okay. So when you calculate a consolidation, you know the initial effect of stress, you know the final effect of stress due to added loading, and also the pre-consolidation pressure is given to you from 1D consolidation test. Okay. So with these three values, then you can look at which one of the cases it is. So this is case three, and notice I put a footnote here. So this, so for case three, actually there's, uh, if you want to call it case four, uh, it's actually an unloading case. Okay. So for unloading case, basically soil is going to follow this recompression curve. Okay. For unloading, this is a case where sigma f is smaller than sigma not prime. Okay. So you're removing loading. So your final effective stress is going to be smaller than the initial effective stress. So I put a note here because the equation you're going to use is the same as case three. Okay. So you're going to use the same expression for consolidation settlement. Okay. And because your final effective stress is smaller than the initial one, you're going to get a negative SC. So that means soil is rebounding when you remove load on top. Okay, so this is a special case. Uh, I didn't list it case four because the, the equation is the same, but note that the uh, final effective stress is smaller if you're unloading the soil. Okay, so you will get negative SC value. So these are basically the, these three cases. With these, you can handle most of the primary consolidation problems. Okay. So really the key again is to figure out the void ratio change due to effective stress change. And if you know which case it is, you can use the correct slope or correct e equation to calculate that.